And this is, this is going to be the overview of my presentation. I'll start with an introduction that would enhance us or help us to understand the crux of this um, issue that I'm about to talk about. Then I'll look at certain definition of key concepts. Um, I'll not delve much into that because of time. Look at the statement of the problem, objective of the study, theoretical framework that underpins this study, and some related studies and African government's role towards sustainable and economic development. Then I'll come out with my findings and there'll be discussions, conclusions, and food for thought. Now with the introduction. There's a view that artificial lines made by the Europeans resulted in the lack of social capital and ethnic homogeneity within most states. I'm trying to trace um, why Africa is still underdeveloped up to this time and what role the government is playing at this point in time. Then another key point is the fact that the existing political institutions and laws are not based on pre-existing culture and norms within the country, but rather on laws and institutions made in Europe. There is therefore a mismatch between state and society, institutional laws, and culture. So we, Africa as a state did not really had its own culture before um, um, European domination. But they came with a different culture, and this has affected our way of going about our culture. At independence, the states were captured by domestic but Western-educated Africans. This in turn affected policy choices and the quality of governance. This is also a key point because if I should use the term harshly at independence, the educated or the elite Africans had, had been indoctrinated with Western ideas. So when they also came on, they forgot about what um, we inherited in the past and came out with um, in, in other words, followed um, African um, cultural practices. Then according to um, Engelbert, African states suffer on average from greater legitimacy deficits than other regions. In other words, countries that are perceived to be illegitimate countries always have problems of instability, poor economic performance, and greater instability. Um, if I have time, we could have spoken about um, what state legitimacy means and what um, an illegitimate um, state always also means. Then the definition of key concepts, which I will not um, delve much into it. Um, sustainable development. When we talk about sustainable development, what are we talking about? To what extent can we say that we have achieved sustainable development or not? Talk about economic growth, what are the indicators? What are the parameters to show that um, this country is growing or this country is not growing? Then we look at the pre-colonial and post-colonial Africa. This will enhance our understanding as to, especially with regards to um, the issues that took place during the pre-colonial times would enhance our understanding as to why Africa still remains um, an undeveloped economy. Then the issue of state legitimacy. If you understand state legitimacy, it will be also easy to understand state illegitimacy because all legitimate states have certain key characteristics. Then the statement of the problem. Africa is the second and most the second and most populous continent in the world with diverse culture and immense natural resources. 
It is also considered the oldest inhabited territory on earth. Now the problem is yet, why or how come that Af the African economy remains underdeveloped despite decades of conceptualizing, formulating, and implementing various types of political, economic, and social cultural policies and programs. Then I looked at the objectives of the study. Basically, I have three key objectives. The first one is to ascertain the effectiveness of African governments in enhancing sustainable development and economic growth. Have our governments really made it? If not, then what is the problem? I also want to measure the impact of pre- and post-colonial policies and programs in tandem with development and economic growth. And the last but not least objective is to ascertain the sustainability of joint policies and programs that have been put out by African leaders in an attempt to um, solve the socioeconomic challenges. I now look at my theoretical framework. I'm looking at two key theories to back this work, and that has to do with the modernization theory and the growth theory. The modernization theory has certain key tenets, and this is what I've summarized. The first is the fact that lack of development is seen as a condition proud to development. This is what the modernization theories are saying every country will of necessity go through under development. So uh, then it's natural that African is, Africa is underdeveloped. Therefore, third world societies are underdeveloped countries gradually moving towards modernity. Then the other issue is that lack of development is the fault of the third world countries. Socioeconomic systems that create obstacles to modernization and encourage little ambition among individuals. As I started with the introduction, it means these two statements are conflictual because I'm trying to trace um, this lack of underdevelopment from the historical or the pre-colonial times and what really um, existed. Then development is also presented as a relatively straightforward process of efficient social adaptation of periods of strain. Then at this point, there were some changes um, from that Western perspective that development could only emanate from the West. But it turned out that countries, uh, the Asian countries, especially um, China and others, started developing. So the theory was twisted in a way, and that accounts for the next um, key point. That is, development occurs not only along Western lines from third world countries, but also for countries which are now socialist states. And this is in direct reference to China. Then there's one popular writer, Rousteau. Rousteau also said that Western countries continue to grow and develop and enjoy prosperity of the period of high mass consumption. In other words, there's no sign of collapse or decline in these economies. Then, then I want to touch briefly on the um, growth theory. It has two main um, um, ideas. First idea is that the perception that the Industrial Revolution accounts for the era of modern growth. In other words, growth depends on science. That one is accepted and uh, many works have been written on it. But the second assumption is that theory could begin only when hard work and business were free from heavy taxation. In other words, the absence of interference by governments. The second point is therefore a challenge not just to explain growth, but the evolution of political and religious institutions and social attitudes as well, as I've indicated in my introduction. Now, I want us to look at um, what government, African governments, what efforts have they really put into getting um, Africa turned into a developed country? There have been so many initiatives. 
Examples are the 1980 Lagos Plan, the 1986 to 90 Priority Program, uh, just to mention a few. But the recent one, of course, has to do with the Millennium Development Goals, which we accepted wholeheartedly. Um, it ends in 2015, but I can tell you that out of all these seven goals, none has been achieved by any African state. Then I try to use the, uh, the pest analysis to see if um, there could be a way forward. So the P is for the political, and I looked at the wind of change that has exerted so much pressure on democratic governance. Yes, um, if we want to develop the perception is that, okay, um, be democratic. But unfortunately, in our situation and a typical example is in Ghana. Because of this condition for democratic, for the country to be democratic, we have had military leaders who have just turned overnight to become um, politicians. That is why I've said that incumbent leaders who became Democrats for convenience rather than by conviction. And a typical example is um, in Ghana, um, Jerry John Rawlings, he ruled the country for over 15 years. Then overnight, he became um, 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 a politician and ruled for eight more years as a democratic leader. So is this really working? Um, I also considered um, the aspect of weak institutions. Are our institutions strong enough? When President Obama visited, he said, we need strong institutions. We don't need strong men very weak institutions. Then I looked at the economic aspect that has to do with globalization. And I looked at it, yes, in spite of all the benefits and advantages that are associated with globalization. Um, can we also think about the trade imbalance and how is it enhancing our development? Take, for instance, the major donors in the international community. There's a Chinese proverb that um, you should teach someone how to fish. Don't give the person the fish. If you always give the person the fish, you always be um, dependent on you. But if you teach the person how to fish, then you become independent. Then the sociocultural aspects which have been spoken about, we still have the negative and positive aspects of it. Technological, which I think we are not really there, but with time, I think we can pick up from. Then my key findings, I've said that many initiatives taken by African governments to reverse underdevelopment have not been implemented. There are so many cases. Um, governments of Africa have come together several times to even come out with a common currency, the echo. But believe you me, it's still something we cannot, I, I, I don't know even where it has got into. African leaders, to a large extent, have failed to enhance economic sustainability and development. And if I want to delve into this, it has to do with the bribery, corruption, and so many other things. Then finally, I have to say that no single factor or theory can explain Africa's problem of underdevelopment. A holistic approach should be considered. So we should not look at it from just one way as a problem of um, colonial underdevelopment or just um, our leaders who are misleading us. A blend of these factors would give us a holistic meaning of this. And I'm left with the discussions, conclusions, and food for thought, which I think should come from you. Thank you very much. My name is Mashair. I'm from Sudan. I would like to add something to your presentation. Thank, Thank you. you first for the very insightful presentation. Um, you know, all the previous presentations were talking about uh, the underdevelopment in Africa and what we uh, Africans should do to overcome these uh, obstacles that we have. I, uh, I, what has been in my mind is a story that I have heard from a Japanese friend. Um, uh, there was a teacher who asked his students uh, he, he just put a, a word in the, the blackboard saying that the secret of success is, 
and he let his students complete the sentence. So if I ask all of us as African, what is the secret of success? What is going to be your answer? If I ask you, for instance, what is the secret of success? <laughs> is, just one word, a what? Education, um, hard working, hard work, yeah. uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Common, Common sense. sense. <laughs> okay. Mm? Uh, strategic. Mm. Strat strategy. Strategies. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Strategies too. Uh, I believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> okay. So we are going to have different answers for the secret of success. Right. And this Japanese guy gave the conclusion of this. He said the secret of success is to let others succeed. And I think this is the notion that we have to plant in each and every African person. Because we have been talking about implants and uh, projects that have failed. Why? Because as one of the professors mentioned, they fail because we only think of the profit, our personal profit. But if we thought of those projects as something that is going to That's benefit right. all of us, I think we are going to yeah. succeed. We need to put this into consideration. The secret of success right. is to let others succeed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that contribution. Thank you very much for the very logical presentation. Um, I think taking up from your finding, going to discussions, I think that this body, this conference is saying that the explanation for Africa's failure to achieve sustainable economic development yes, lies in our culture. That's right. And that therefore, embracing our culture and turning this culture through diplomacy is the path to sustainable future economic development. That's right. uh, because it will harness the world to recognize what is good in African culture, and help us boost them with technology, which is what we, where we are really lacking. Right. And with all hands being on deck, because an all-inclusive all push to a renewed Africa and a renewed world, with everybody recognizing each other's culture right. and leading the cultural amalgamation. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.